Hey everyone, even though my username is Thomas Wooden Railway, I do like to dabble in other forms of Thomas merchandise from time to time. However, I've never exclusively looked at something that wasn't completely Thomas before. But that changes today because I am going to do a review and unboxing video of these two Chuggington Wooden Railway sets. Now, you're probably wondering why am I taking a look at a competitor's merchandise that is basically a direct ripoff of Thomas and Friends. And I do have a good point, and let me explain that. A couple of years ago, Chuggington was actually a pretty big threat when it came to Thomas and Friends. In fact, I'd say for just a tiny bit, Chuggington was doing a little bit better. Um, I never got into Chuggington because I grew up with Thomas, and Thomas has been around for decades. And Chuggington was just this new TV show that to me was just a blatant direct ripoff of Thomas and Friends. I mean, you can't do, you know, talking trains without being directly compared to the original talking train series, which is Thomas and Friends, or at least the, you know, the best well-known one. So um, I think a lot of people, myself included, who are Thomas fans, viewed Chuggington as a direct threat. And we all kind of boycotted Chuggington. And honestly, you know, I wasn't, I, I watched a couple episodes. I never got into the characters or anything like that. So I had no real reason to go out and buy the toys. Um, the toy, I mean, the show started around, I want to say like 2008 ish. And then the toys started appearing in stores relatively, you know, around the same time. And I remember what happened was, you know, the Thomas section at like my Toys R Us, for example, it was one aisle, it was all Thomas stuff. Then when Chuggington came along, literally the Thomas section got cut in half and all of a sudden we're starting to see, you know, these wooden railway Chuggington sets and like these die cast portable versions and, um, you know, basically Chuggington was doing everything they could to try to topple the Thomas and Friends empire. Well, they survived for a little bit. I'd say, you know, maybe their height of their success was around 2011 or so. And then, you know, they went from zero to 100 really quickly, and then they fell off the face of the earth just as quickly, in my opinion. Um, I really don't know the state of the Chuggington franchise. Um, I heard one, I heard from s some people that, you know, they're still making episodes, but they're making them slower. I've talked with a couple of store owners who sell both Thomas and Chuggington products, and they have told me that Chuggington, at least when it comes to merchandise, is no longer making merchandise on this grand scale. So it's really interesting how Chuggington came into the world, and they were really looking to topple Thomas and Friends. And they hung around for a little bit. They were popular for a little while, mostly because they were the shiny new penny, whereas Thomas has, you know, been around the block a couple of times. Um, but then they just fell off the face of the earth, and I really don't know the, the state of Chuggington. However, when it comes to their merchandise, they certainly aren't producing it on such a massive scale as they used to. So in this video, I'm going to sort of step into the lion's den, go across to enemy territory, and take a look at these two wooden railway sets. Uh, the one on the left is called Wilson Rides the Rails, which seems to be your basic starter set. And then the one on the right uh, seems a little bit more complex, and it's called Cargo Crossover. Uh, really funny story as to, you know, how or why I picked these up. This set came from Tuesday Morning, which is a discount store in the United States that I've talked about. Um, you can see the price tag there. Um, really, I mean, they just put our number here, compare at. That's just saying, you know, what it would normally sell for in a store. But they, could, they just put a random number there to try to make you focus on how much of a deal you're getting. So they had it priced at $14.99, but then this sticker here, um, it was on their clearance rack, and the sticker indicates like a certain percentage off of the clearance that you're getting. And so when it was all said and done, it was like 60% off, so I ended up getting this for like $7, which I thought was a pretty good deal. And then if you thought that was a good deal, this set right here came from Toys R Us. I bought this in March. 2017 before all of their financial problems and I got this set no joke for three cents it rang up as three cents and apparently 
Um, the reason or why that's done is because when that happens to a product, Toys R Us is supposed to come along and take it off the shelves, and it's supposed to be meant for donation. I don't know why that is. I don't know why you would not, not at least try to sell it for a few dollars. But anyway, um, this whole set right here rang up for three cents. So right here, you're looking at $7.03 worth of product. Obviously, this was a couple of years ago. Actually, I got this a few months ago. But Chuggington is, you know, really kind of long gone, and so they were just trying to clear these toys out. So I'm actually going to start with this smaller set right here. Let me readjust the camera, and I will be back in just a moment. All right, I have come along and sort of prepped this box for unboxing. There's what the back of the box looks like, if you want to know. And what's interesting is Chuggington was actually made by Tomy, which was the company that was bought by Learning Curve um, back around like 2010, 2011. And then Tomy produced the wooden railway toys for 2012. But it was interesting because at the time when Tomy sold um, like the Thomas and Friends merchandise, the wooden railway range to uh, Fisher Price and Mattel, it seemed like at the time they were going to focus on, you know, the Chuggington merchandise and they were giving up the Thomas merchandise, which, you know, makes it seem like they thought Chuggington was a better value. Oh, I got some tape here. I thought I prepped this box well enough, but apparently I didn't. So uh, this is the smaller set. It's called, I think, Wilson Rides the Rails. And it literally looks like just your simple circle set that probably isn't worth more than $7, which is what I paid for it. So we got some instructions here. Um, yeah, it looks pretty straightforward. However, I noticed the way the track connects is a bit interesting. So um, I'm going to have to take a look at that. And then I lost something down here. Oh, I guess we have two sheets of instructions. Well, that's actually kind of nice because on some Thomas stuff I've bought, there haven't been any instructions. So I don't know why that is. All right, so you can't blame me for going off topic here because I do have Wooden Railway in my username. I'm just not taking a look at Thomas stuff right now. So, oh wow, the set's like almost like up and ready to go in the plastic there. However, I took this apart or unboxed it the wrong way. It's like the track is like, you see that? It's like connected already. That's interesting. And like I said, during like Chuggington's heyday, I didn't pay much attention because it was like the enemy. And so I really wanted it to fail. I didn't want, you know, Thomas to get run off the shelves, which I don't know if that was ever like a serious possibility or not, but okay. This is very, very strange. Let me adjust the camera, bring it down a little bit. So the only experience I have with Chuggington is I used to watch Leo Kim videos, reviews, where he would kind of compare and contrast Chuggington versus Thomas. Um, so I'm going, trying to go into this with an open mind. I think that's how, if you see that, if my camera will focus. Um, there's still, it looks like a clipped connection, maybe. I'm probably going to have to read the directions. Do you just have to push really hard or no? Okay, we're not going to worry about that. I'll figure that out in just a moment. So, if we were to compare this track here to Thomas' track, it's like we got four small curves and then like a, an eight inch piece of track right about here. And then, you know, it's just like your circle, almost like a racetrack layout, it looks like. So, what am I missing here it looks like you literally just push it in and it should click but it's not clicking let's not have another repeat of the grain loader where I totally botch up a video okay so <laughs> what's interesting is the track is like completely flexible because of these plastic connectors so there's no like male or female ends necessarily oh there's some right here okay that's what is going on here but then like these two pieces can't come apart you see that i'm already not really liking this because it, you don't have a whole lot of freedom when it comes to designing you know what track layout you want to do it's like this is supposed to just remain this loop and you don't really get any options when it comes to i guess uh 
you know, customizing it. Because that's what any Thomas fan or any wooden railway or model train person wants to do. They want to expand their collection and their layout. And if they can't even do that, well, then what's the point of buying more? So I guess uh, Wilson is still in the plastic here. This is what I'm really interested to see because I've actually never held one of these in my hand. One of the Chuggington engines, I guess they're called Chuggers. Uh, I know that's Wilson, Chugganeer Wilson. They call him a Chugganeer. Huh. And then here is the, I guess, their version of a cargo car. Yep, cargo car. Look, that's even like the same font as a learning curve cargo car. No joke. Seems like a direct ripoff to me, but that's just me. So let me clear this away. I'm gonna keep the instructions here because I may need them. Um, all right, so let's try to look at this from an unbiased perspective and just see what we get here. Whoops. Well, we don't get a whole lot, as you can tell. It's just a simple circle set, which is, isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a nice beginner or starter set. Um, moving Wilson down the track, feel-wise, it feels it's much more robust than a Thomas engine, for example. Um, it's a lot taller. I remember one of the big things Leo Kim video would point out during his comparison videos is that the Chuggington engines couldn't fit um, under like Thomas Bridges because they're like a tiny bit taller. So let's actually examine Wilson here. Obviously the, I think the, the Chuggington engines are supposed to represent the characters, you know, as if they were a real life engine. Um, whereas, you know, like, you know, a Thomas engine, they just have a face over their smoke box. Whereas, you know, we've kind of like in the cars universe, we've sort of gone that route for the Chuggington engines because the eyes are up here. So I'm guessing I've never really seen the series. So I'm guessing they don't have like drivers or firemen. Well, Wilson's a diesel, so he doesn't have a fireman. The detail is nice though. Um... The magnets seem very just out there. They kind of distract. They look, you know, like when um, the take a or the take and play engines had those. They used to have the really small two-way magnets, and then they got rid of them to the one-way magnets, and they were like more robust and ugly looking. That's what this kind of reminds me of. So quality-wise, it seems like a pretty quality toy. Um, I believe the show, Chuggington, originated in the UK, sort of like Thomas, and then it came overseas and it got like a new voice cast and everything. Do the wheels, sorry, let me, the wheels do have dates. This says 2010. But the copyright on both boxes of the sets we're taking a look at are 2015. So I wonder if it's like a case of where all the Thomas engines for a while were just dated 2003 just because we probably have the same, you know, thing going on there. So the cargo car, I looked at this briefly, that is the same font and everything. It looks like I'm looking at the bottom of a, of a Thomas and Friends cargo car right there. Interestingly, that is a very common screw head. I wonder why they put that on the bottom. In fact, I have a screwdriver right here. I don't know if this will work. Hey, so what happens when I take this apart? Uh, anything? I unscrewed it, or did I not do it enough? There's a piece of cat hair on my screwdriver, sorry about that. Okay. So, I unscrewed this, and the screw is loose, but it's not popping apart unless I need to pull harder or something. I don't even know if you're supposed to unscrew that. Okay, I'm guessing maybe you aren't supposed to unscrew that. I'm guessing that's just, you know, part of the manufacturing process. But it's interesting, like, with what Thomas and Friends does, when they don't want you messing with the screws, they make them this really odd shape so that a normal screwdriver can't, like, pick them out. Uh, Wheel-wise, you probably noticed this on Wilson, the wheels are just much duller, in my opinion. There's not a whole lot of detail going on there. And this plastic cargo car, I mean, you know, it seems really, really cheap, like... There's sort of, I hate to, you know, say it, but it's like the Thomas cargo cars seem like of a higher grade or higher quality when it comes to the plastic. So Wilson here, 
can't really do a whole lot on his little railway. I still have not figured out how to do this. I really don't want to take the time. Do I need to like twist it? No. Oh. Oh. Don't leave me, Wilson. Wilson, don't leave me. So I have these instructions here. I don't want to spend too much time on this set because it's awfully boring. Um, that's not a whole lot of help. <laughs> so is this any more help? Close up before. I am just confused as to why there are two different sets or ways of connecting the track in this same set. We have this weird hybrid connecty way that is definitely not Thomas and Friends inspired, but we do have, you know, something inspired by Thomas and Friends down here, where it's like your typical male-female uh, connection there. So this is a nice piece of technology. It allows you to flip the track over really easily without like completely taking it apart. And I'm guessing it has something to do with height elevation because the other set I'm looking at it right now is called cargo crossover and there is a bit of elevation there. And it looks like there are some pieces, some connecty pieces like that in that set. So I'm guessing maybe that's what this is for. I was never a huge fan of the track. I always thought it you know, I, I like the, the, the stripes that the uh, Thomas track had. So anyway, we have, I'm kind of at a loss for words as to what to say about this tiny little Chuggington set. Obviously it's not super impressive, but then again, a circle set for Wooden Railway, for Thomas and Friends Wooden Railway, isn't that impressive either. So I'm not just bashing this set just because it's Chuggington, I'm actually trying to be as unbiased as possible. But how much fun and excitement is a little kid going to have with this tiny set here? I don't think they're going to have a whole ton of fun, to be honest, because there's just not a lot going on. Um, but from what I've seen, you know, it seems like a high quality product. Um, you know, Wilson seems well made. The cargo car is just plastic. The weird thing is we don't get anything to put in the cargo car. I don't believe. Let me take a look at the box. No, I guess it's empty. So they call this track system, I don't know if I'll be able to get it on camera. At the top there, it says one, two, three track, as easy as one, two, three track. So apparently that's what, this, it's like a patented track system. Um, there's some directions there and they show a little kid using it and I can't even figure out how to use it so that shows my basic intelligence level. But anyway, I think we've talked about this set long enough. Um, not that impressive. I'm more looking forward to this cargo crossover set and then we'll kind of set them up next to each other and I'll bring out some Thomas trains and we'll kind of compare and contrast everything and see if, Chugging, if these two Chuggington sets, if they had stayed around a little bit longer, if they were actually anything to be concerned about. Now let's take a look at the cargo crossover set, which uh, I mentioned before, seems to have a lot more playability. There's a lot more going on. And really quickly, let me show you guys this. Uh, it says it works with other wooden train systems. They're obviously referring to Thomas and Friends or Imaginarium or something like that. Um, so I think I will come along and, you know, uh, line some track up and just see you know transition wise how it is but I think this unboxing is going to take a little while because there's definitely a lot more to put together here so right away we have more of this weird flexi track and off screen by the way off screen I did get the track from that other set to connect you kind of have to put it in like this and then push together while turning it at least that's what I figured out what I had to do to make it work so any Chuggington experts out there, I would be happy to know as to why there are these two different types of connection systems with the track. Um, I think you would either, in my way, you know, you'd, you'd do it either, in my opinion, you do it either one way or the other. Um, but that's just me. So, we got to look at Wilson last time. And now we're gonna take a look at Brewster. I can get them out. There we go. Um, 
we got a lot of junk here that we don't really need. Okay, we got some sort of tower, all plastic. I can tell that right away, but you know, I, I give a, you know, learning curve and Tommy and Mattel and Fisher Price a lot of grief for, um, you know, having plastic in their wooden railway, but I think Chuggington was never super key on trying to include wood. They were just trying to steal the spotlight from Thomas and friends. So let me, um, I'm just trying to get everything out of the box here and then we can get a better camera angle. We got some sort of cargo bin, which doesn't look too bad. All right, is that everything? That is everything. I feel like I'm doing a mass unboxing video with all the stuff I got here. So right off the bat, let's take a look at Brewster. I guess that was the most appealing part of looking at these sets. I just wanted to see what the engines looked like. When I look at Brewster, I just automatically think back to those Leo Kim video videos um, where he did he looked at Chuggington for a long time and Chugganeer Brewster. Um, I don't I don't see the reason why they need to say Chugganeer unless it's like an integral part of the show, like who's a Chugganeer and who's not. I think just, you know, kids might get confused unless they really know the show. Kids might be start calling him Chugging Your Brewster, whereas his real name is just Brewster, I think. But what's really interesting about Brewster is obviously he has a really squashed form here, which was kind of a foreshadow of the Thomas Wood engines before we even knew what Thomas Wood was. Uh, Brewster's basis looks a lot like D199 or Spam Can is what I've noticed. Just the color scheme too. A little bit darker blue there. Um, let's see what else we got. We got some plastic supports. <laughs> yep, all plastic. This is the cargo bin. Hey, we got some wood on this, which is good. This looks like something straight out of Thomas and Friends wood. Uh, we got some instructions, which hopefully will be more helpful than the last ones, although I, I figured it out eventually. So we got like a figure eight set going on here and there's an elevated portion. So I will probably have to put this set mostly together off screen and just come back for like an overview just because I don't want to embarrass myself. Okay, we got another cargo car, but this time we actually get a piece of cargo. I wonder why the first set didn't come with cargo. That's, I don't know. I, I think it was supposed to be like the cheapest set they could possibly make. That, uh, that Wilson rides the rail set. Oh wow, we get our own piece of Chuggington cargo. Very, very interesting. I might sneak this into one of my wooden railway episodes. Uh, this looks like the same exact cargo car. So what was interesting, <laughs> we got a red engine with a blue cargo car and then we got a blue engine with a red cargo car. How about that? So I was kind of hoping just for variety's sake that I get something a little bit different this time around. But hey, we got two cargo cars, which I guess is good. We got another thing of instructions. We got all this track here. So this is like, oh man, there's tape on it. I was gonna say, I was having a hard time getting it apart. That is interesting. So with the Thomas Wynn Railway stuff, when you just dump everything out of the box, the pieces just come flying out, but they actually, they're like taped together here for some odd reason. Well, me with no fingernails, that's gonna be a whole lot of fun trying to get that off. And then I was gonna say we have your typical like wooden railway slash Thomas and Friends connection there. And then we have, uh, we'll call it the Chuggington connection because it it's definitely, eh, man, unless I'm guessing this is used for the elevation parts. I don't really know why they had to do it like this. I guess that just, it allows you, I guess, whereas like in the Thomas and Friends wooden railway merchandise range, you would have to have a specific ascending track piece here to go up and down, whereas this allows you to be extremely flat or to actually act as that piece. So I think that's why they did that, but I'm not 100% sold on this type of connection. Um, I'm kind of thinking that if it ever came over to Thomas Wooden Railway, I would be very, very upset. So anyway, um, in a perfect world, I'd love to put this together on screen. 
I don't think that's going to be the case just because we've got a lot of stuff here and i got to take a look at the directions. So let me put everything together and I'm going to come back and look at the two sets side by side and I'll incorporate some Thomas engines and we'll just see how everything plays out. So when it's all said and done with, we have these two Chuggington wooden railway sets right here. We have already taken a look at that circle set or rectangular set, whatever you want to call it. That's what it looks like from a different angle, but here is the big set that I just put together. Again, I wish I would have been able to put it together on screen, but I didn't want to sit here fumbling for 20 minutes while I figured out how to work this very weird track. So this is the cargo crossover set, and um, it's full of surprises, to say the least. We got two forms of uh, connection going on here. We have like your classic, wooden railway connection right there. I can remove this piece of track and put it somewhere else or insert it or flip it over and it's completely okay. Then we have this, I guess you would call it like Chuggington style of connection where the engine is still able to roll across it but um, all of this track can be linked together which does create a stronger connection but at the same time um, it just doesn't feel right. Not in the sense that I don't like it, but it kind of feels very unsteady in some areas. We have these look like Lego Duplo risers, um, which are made entirely out of plastic. We have this tower, there's no detailing on the other side, which is made entirely out of plastic. So the only areas of wood that I see on this set are the track, the bottom of this uh, cargo drop piece, cargo storage area, and then this piece of Chuggington cargo, which I looked at briefly earlier. So the way this train moves about the track, it, it, it feels very familiar. I want to say, you know, there's there's a bit of a, uh, a depth difference between this track and Thomas track. Um, but then again, the Chuggington engines ride a lot differently just because, you know, their height and the way they're made and everything. So as I move, uh, Brewster around on the track. I didn't intend for that to happen. Um, I mean, there are areas for accidents. Like, you know, you can have an engine going screaming down the rails right there. Um, there's this very tight part where it goes underneath that riser and there's your complete circuit. So it feels somewhat similar to Thomas and Friends, but at the same time, you know, so does like Imaginarium and Melissa and Duck. So there's a difference, but at the same time, you know, not everything's gonna feel exactly like the Thomas Wooden Railway line. Um, I don't really expect any difference if I were to bring Wilson over here, because these two, I mean, it looks like they're even made from the same mold. So I don't, I would not expect them to work any differently or anything like that. So this set um, has me thinking because on one hand, I want to compare it to previous Thomas Wooden Railway sets that I own and love, but at the same time, I feel like I need to judge it differently because it is not a Thomas product. So I think I'll do both because I really don't know what else to say. So compared to other Thomas products, like another Thomas Wooden Railway set, which has like an elevated area and it comes with an engine and a piece of rolling stock, I would say that it's not as good, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Thomas Wooden Railway person. For one thing, I mean, this form of track may be very um, futuristic. I mean, this may be the way that all Wooden Railway um, merchandise lines go in the future, but right now, it's a pain to work with. Um, I would much rather have a dedicated piece of uh, an ascending track piece right here than this fancy schmancy thing that's supposed to double as both. Um, it provides a very sort of, I don't know, I had, you know, when I was testing this, I had trouble getting Brewster when I was pushing the cargo car from behind. As you can see right there, I had trouble getting him to actually go up the track, whereas if you did that with a Thomas Ascending track piece, he would probably be okay. Um, I really don't like these risers. That's the thing that stands out to me. They are, they look cheap, they look ugly. Um, and these circles at the top remind me of something from like Lego Duplo, that sort of deal. This building is very unimaginative and uninspired, and I really don't know what purpose it serves. However, up here, I should know, there is an area where you can put the piece of cargo, 
and then I guess if you were to put the cargo car here, you would uh, sort of act as like a dumping system, which is something that Thomas Wooden Railway has as well. And what's unique to this set is that this building is actually supposed to be set on this curve, which I'm not completely crazy about because the uh, platform that it's sitting on is in a rectangular shape, but then you're supposed to put a curved piece of track on it. So I don't know if that was just poor planning or if they think, you know, you'll use this building for something else. I really don't know, but it kind of threw me for a loop there. I wasn't really expecting that. Overall, considering everything you see here cost me $7, obviously I think it was a pretty wise investment, primarily just to have the Chuggington engines, Wilson and Brewster. That was really all I was caring about because I just wanted to see how they stacked up compared to like Thomas engines. And I could care less about the track and the very limited accessories that we get here. So that's just my honest opinion of it. Um, I think, I don't know, it's I, probably just because I know the Thomas brand better, but a similar set like this one in the Thomas Wooden Railway line just seems to have more character than this one. It's like, what is this building supposed to represent? I'm not really sure, whereas in the Thomas line, I think it would be themed a little bit. Um, the risers are definitely taller than wooden railway risers, that's because the engines are taller than the Thomas engines. And I'm just not on board with this Thomas, or excuse me, this uh, Chuggington track system, That those weird connections, I don't know. I don't really see anything wrong with the old connections right there, and the weird thing is, is that it, you know, the elevated stuff is connected like that, but then the stuff on the ground isn't. But then in this set, pretty much all the pieces, with the exception of this right here, are that weird connector style. So it's like, was this, is this supposed to be able to you know stand up in the air or something like that if I had some supports? I don't really know. But anyway, um, I thought I would just take a look at those two sets really quickly um, side by side and see what we get. Let me bring in a very familiar blue tank engine. I've tried to replicate the similarities here with a blue engine, a red cargo car, and sort of a, you know, clear, not clear, but just a brown wood cargo piece. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is move this. The good news is, look, it all sticks together, which is nice. I'll give them that. That's sort of a nice feature where you can just pick it up and move it. Um, you know, with Chuggington, I guess there was a, there was a, um, like a die cast portable range, I want to say. And then there was like a motorized version, which was really interesting. So I was going to compare this type of, you know, track picker upper style to, you know, the take and play where you can move it around really quick. But anyway, here are Brewster and Thomas side by side. Brewster is much taller. Um, he's about the same length. Probably a little bit longer. I think his magnets stick out more for sure, but the cargo car is actually a bit smaller. Uh, so the Chuggington cargo piece will fit in the Thomas cargo car, but vice versa will not work. And I remember that's what Leo Kim Video would stress all the time is this like cross compatibility where if you want kids to play with your toy, you need to be able to conform to the other toys out there because kids kids just like to mash up their toys and play with them in just any random form. I think as a kid, I was probably actually one of the most strict when it came to my toys. I liked having my Thomas stuff on my play table and really nothing else. But I think kids nowadays with Hot Wheels and Barbies and, um, you know, Lego and just every other toy that's out there, you know, they just like to combine them all. So that's sort of a downside that, you know, one cargo car is significantly shorter than the other and that the two cargo pieces actually can't really interact and play with each other because they're from rival brands. If I um, move Thomas over to this piece of track and have him line up with the Chuggington cargo car, the magnet height is uh, a little bit off there. As you can see that Thomas is much lower to the ground. And then, I mean, if I move Thomas along the track, it feels pretty normal. Can't feel anything major right there. Um, yeah, so overall, I've been saying this the whole video, I am partial to Thomas and friends. And I've tried to go into this with just, you know, the best open view that I possibly can. 
Um, but I still think Thomas is superior, and that's probably why they won out this battle that was going on a couple years ago. Um, like I said, I really don't know where Chuggington stands, and you know, in terms of their uh, their TV show, they've obviously cut back on merchandise. Everything's cut back at Toys R Us right now, the Toys R Us stores that are still open. But the only form of Chuggington merchandise I've seen in a really long time are like these squishy toys that just have some of the Chuggington characters. And, I mean, I don't blame them for trying to take over uh, the Thomas Empire. They were typically a bit more progressive at the time, whereas Thomas was, you know, trains moving down the track. These engines were jumping up and down, and they had pretty, um, I guess, more common, more recent names. Like, there was an engine called Pace, I want to say, um, and Zack. Whereas Thomas has always stuck with older names such as George <laughs> and Henry and Gordon because that's just the era that it was brought up in. However, recently we've gotten more common names like Luke and Logan. Um, and we'll probably see more common names as time goes on. But I just remember that was a very interesting um, difference between the toys. And Leo Kim Video did that video where... He asked his son to name the different, you know, the Thomas characters and the Chuggington characters. And he knew the Thomas characters really well, but he never got a grip on the Chuggington characters for some reason. Um, I mean, I Chuggington is not sold in a whole lot of places. If it is still sold, it's in probably like a specialty type novelty, novelty type store, excuse me. That's what I meant to say. That sells Brio and stuff like that. Um... I don't know. It's really interesting to uh, look at, you know, these two brands side by side. They obviously have a lot of similarities. They have a lot of differences. But the primary reason that I looked at this is because Chuggington came in and they were um, their I think their whole um, purpose of their existence was to try to take down Thomas here. And I think they failed for a couple of reasons. I talked about the names. You know, Thomas is the central character to his show. Whereas Chuggington, what we have Wilson and Brewster and Coco trying to share the spotlight. So, you know, you have all three of them on the merchandise, whereas you could just normally, you know, plot Thomas anywhere and everybody knows who he is. So Chuggington tried their best. I think they ultimately failed, even if there's like a reboot in the works for Chuggington or what knows go, what's going on. Um, Thomas remains king, without a doubt. So, um, I was going to go into more detail about the differences in the track and any other potential, you know, fun things I could think of, but I think it's pretty, I mean, it looks just like Thomas track. However, you can't combine areas like that. You can't combine that with a, a Thomas Wooden Railway piece of track just because the connection's so different. So, on one hand, you know, when you're the new kid on the block, you have to conform to what the old kid has done, aka what Thomas was doing. And obviously Chuggington knew that. That's why they brought in this wooden railway system to directly compete with the Thomas Wooden Railway line. But then when you start making changes like this that makes you no longer compatible, that's when you run into trouble. And that's one of my biggest gripes with Thomas and Friends Wood is that all of a sudden we have a brand new style of track, which is, it could be very well said, you know, that this is the classic style and then we have the Thomas Wood style, which is basically non-compatible. I'd need an adapter to work with this. And I really don't, you know, the tracks are the same width. The, they appear to be the same gauge. It's like, why was the track design changed? So that, in my opinion, Chuggington's kind of playing with fire when it comes to this style of track because, you know, you're, you're trying to make yourself exclusive. And although that has its benefits, like you may seem like a higher quality product or you're trying to distance yourself, um, you suddenly cannot connect to this guy, which is is the guy that's been in charge all these years so anyway i'm kind of rambling at this point i want to thank you guys for watching this video overall i think uh chuggington made a valiant stand at trying to take thomas down but unless they they never hit on something that was going to take thomas down completely you know they made a few jabs here and there um and you know maybe the episodes were more flashy with the engines jumping up and down but good news we took that away from chuggington and thomas and now the engines do that for some reason so um at the same time competition is always good because it forced you know the people at thomas and friends to really look at their product and see like okay like do we have something strong enough to compete against these guys it forced both companies 
behind these uh, two toys to work really hard. So competition is always a good thing. Um, but then at the same time, when looking at these two toys, it always seemed like a battle where one of them was going to die off. I never thought Chuggington would survive. You know, I'd be shocked if Chuggington was still around um, today, which it really isn't. It's kind of dropped off the face of the earth. So anyway, although Chuggington did a good job at trying to steal Thomas's thunder, Thomas eventually won out. Chuggington merchandise is pretty much non-existent at this point. And the only reason I'm looking at these sets is because they haven't sold in a couple of years and I got them for super cheap. And I never went out and bought anything Chuggington related. And I said this before, I was primarily just worried about, or not worried, but I just wanted the engines. So I can just say I have some of the Chuggington engines. Um, they're weird and they're all made of plastic. Um, so yeah, even though it's called the Chuggington Wooden Railway, there's not a whole lot of wood in this. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a bit of a different video, but I thought, you know what? It'd be worth it to make a video because at one point it seemed like Chuggington was a, a big threat to Thomas and Friends. And, you know, it wasn't something they weren't just going to fade away very quietly. Thomas and Friends had to put up quite a battle. Um, and in the end they won, but at what cost? As we're seeing with the current state of the TV show and the merchandise. So I don't know. Definitely, you know, back to this simple era of Chuggington versus Thomas, when you go back to like 2011 to 2013, it's a much simpler time when it came to toys compared to what we're dealing with today. So thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate the support. I know this was a very different video because I'm talking about Chuggington, which is like the forbidden word in the Thomas universe. But I really appreciate you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I guess I'll see you on my next upload.